Rabbi Yudai Meshoka Lord of Bosa Kenegar Akli Kenegar Akupitz. If you have a scale, so to use the regular weights, discussed this yesterday a little bit, you're not permitted because that's Uvda Ducho. Meaning, the lady will say there's certain things like you're not permitted to do a business transaction because, rabbinically, because it's a xero, it's a concern because usually whenever you transact something, it always involves writing. So it's a xero because since you may write, therefore you're not permitted to transact something. So there's a famous Rabbi Kivager. If you have a, a lulav, you need a dalid the minimum. The first day sukkahs, the Torah says, you act monetarily, you have to own it. So how do we do it if you don't have a dalid minimum? Or so you give them a You give a preconditioned gift on the condition you get return it. That's how one's yotze. So the question is, but how do you, uh, acquisition is not permitted. You're not permitted to, 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 be, to acquire something on, on shops or yomtif. We don't differentiate. The answer is, since it's the dvar mitzvah, there it's the dvar mitzvah, specifically for the mitzvah, therefore it's not a problem. For instance, matzah. The halach is the matzah we eat. You have to own the matzah. If you don't own the matzah, you're not yotze. So the same thing. So the host, let's say the host, or you, somebody gives you matzah, the yotze, you have to acquire it. How do you acquire it? The answer is, again, since it's for a mitzvah, there's no, <coughs> there's no iser. Rashi in the fifth paragraph, it brings to either it's ksiva, or because it says that, that your behavior on Shabbos and Yom has to be different than, than your behavior during the weekday. So it's a question of what exactly, what it is. So, of course, if that's the case, here at the acquisition, since it's specific for a mitzvah, it's not a problem. So, if you want to weigh something on, on Yom Tif, you can't use the ordinary weight to weigh it. But rather, use a kli, a vessel, or use a kupitz. Kupitz is, is the meat cleaver. Mm-hmm. No, sir, you can't use the scale at all. And the Gemara will explain what, what is kol ikar. Under no circumstance can you use it. My kol ikar. What is the say? Imashgichin, the kapmas naim. You're not permitted to use the kapmas naim. The kapmas naim is the scale. Let's see, Rashi. The table he sells the meat by weight. Because that's a, a massive hole. What is that? What's the kupitz? Satin godel, she calls him a bosser. It's a meat cleaver. Because kupitz could also mean what? Like an axe, a kupitz. The eco shinoi will have a massive hole. Since you're doing it. Not as you, you conventionally would do it, therefore it's not seen as a mice hold the way like a weekday activity. So it's interesting over here. In terms of purchasing the meat, you're permitted to purchase the meat. There's a mission later that uh, this mission in Shabbos that when you wa- go on Yom Tif for Shabbos and you want to buy something, even purchasing, you say, give me, and normally we can normally say, give me a dozen eggs. You can't use that language. You can say, give me 12 eggs. You have to change it because it, otherwise the vernacular, the way you speak, that's the way normally you, you purchase something. So you always have to do it differently. Okay? So even though the food itself that you're, uh, and you're acquiring the food, that, that's Simchus Yom To acquire the food you're permitted. We're talking about we're where there's an honor system. The seller, the storekeeper, he trusts you. The store is open on Yom Tif, Right? But in terms of the, 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 the language that you use, it can't be the language you normally would purchase something. So you change it. So here we're talking about using the scale. What's the problem? I mean, you're not doing this, sir. I mean, even if you want to weigh something for yourself, you're not permitted. You want to weigh something, there's a halacha, you have like a measuring cup at home, and you want to make a, a salad dressing, and you want to measure out exactly the ingredients according to the recipe. You're not allowed because measuring is also measuring is that's, a, that's an over the hole you're not permitted to do this even though it doesn't tell a malacha right so you, you could use it say estimation wise you don't actually measure it up to the you know up to the thing on the side that you could do but to use it as you normally do you're not permitted to do it you're not permitted to take your temperature any te- measuring that's an over the hole even take it today with the thermometers it's understood but even the old the thermometers where there was no electric it wasn't instantaneous, you know? Yeah, you had, it, it measured the body temperature also. Any measuring apparatus, you had a scale to weigh yourself on Shabbos. We're not an electronic scale. You're not, you're not permitted. Because, of course, again, weighing, the whole concept of weighing is an the hole. That's something you do during the weekday. So over here, the review the holes by using the, the weight, the counterweight, to determine the weight of the meat. If you use something which is not what you normally, that's already, it's not a mice of hole. The chum say no, under no circumstance. The concept of using a scale and having, you, you are having an accurate weight. Because factually, the kli, what is the weight of the meat, whatever the weight of the kli is. 
That's considered sufficient. That's called the mice. That's a wounded hole. So what is the question? What does it mean? Kodikor? Emash give a Under no circumstance. You can you? My Kodikor. I'm reviewed on Shmuel. I feel a Shom Minach boring. That even if you only want to use the scale as a place to put food there, because the scale hangs from the ceiling. So if you put food on the, on the plates of the scale, the, ra- the rodents, they can't get it. So over there, you're not even using the scale unconventionally to weigh. You're just using it as a storage location to protect the food from the, from the rodents. Putting something on a scale, that's already identifies that's over the hole. Of course, the way it's perceived, that itself is already too much. That's how, it's, that's how you have to separate yourself from that type of behavior activity. Omer of Yidibar Ovin, who the Talib Trito, it's hanging on a treat like on a chain, on a rope. Rashi says, A nosen bo moznaim hatluyin biyosir agavoa, who Talib Trito, but Tabas, Shetolin also, Bok Shoklin, the Merzi Kenosu, the Shem Mishko. Let's say that the scale is dismantled. It's only where it's, it's, it has attached to it the way you would use it normally when you do away with it. But let's say it's not. Because then it's no worse than uh, it's it's not f- the whole idea. It only identifies the uvdir the whole if it's in a position. Even though you're putting the food there for some other reason, but it's in it's in form that you it, you could weigh, even though you're not using it. But let's say you dismantle it's it's been dismantled and it's, you're putting one using it. You're hanging it on the scale, putting the food on that would be permitted, because the, it's clear the the scale is not an operational scale. It's not functioning. So then it's, it, it it doesn't identify as uvdir the whole. It's only if you have the ring there, which normally, if you'd want to weigh, you could weigh, that's when the Chacham hold, it's, it's Uvdir Chol. It appears to be an Uvdir Chol. Yeah. There's a, there's, there's a safe called Kafa Chaim. It's written by a person who passed away in the, in the 20s, 1920s. He was a Sephardi Jew from Baghdad. So he has a Shiloh over there. Are you permitted to ra- ride a motor scooter on Yom Tif Tishul? Shiloh. What's the issue? What exactly would the issue be to ride? Havora, kindling is permitted. Right? Consumption, burning, Lutzer, Chochel, Nefesh, Chochel, Nefesh, we say Mitoch. Anything which is accommodating, right? We rule like they said before, Mitoch, Shoch, Lutzer, Chochel, Nefesh, Lutzer. So if, even though the gasoline is burning or whatever is the fuel, it's, it, it shouldn't be a problem. What should, what should, what would the issue be? You live three miles from Yeshul, you're within the Trum, and you wanted to get on your motor scooter, right? Uptown Baghdad and t- downtown Baghdad. So he says two things. The Allah is, even though Havar is permitted, but rabbinically, but to be moiledesh, to create fire, you're not per- you want to strike a match on Shab- Yom Tif, you're not permitted. Right? You're permitted to transfer fire. But to be moiledesh, that you're not permitted, to create fire, striking a match. So he says, when you turn on the ignition, what ignites the gas? It creates sparks. Those sparks, that's, wh- that's, how, the, that's how the fuel burns. Even though visually you don't see it, but factually, that, since that is the process, that's noilat, that's moladesh, which is rabbinical. So he's saying it's rabbinical. Secondly, he says, it's uvde de hol. The reason why you're not permitted is because uvde de hol, because when does a person only ride a motor scooter? I mean, that's, that's, the, well, that's how people get, get around, right? That's the whole discussion about riding a bicycle on Shabbos. You have an Eruf, and people ride bis- bi- bicycles on Shabbos. It's also it's uvde de hol. You're not per- it's permitted, right? Because that's the way you normally conduct yourself during the weekday. It's a weekday type of, of behavior. Or it says in Shabbos, Lo ye hiluchacha b'Shabbos ki lucha b'chol. That the way, if it's sort of, Morris says in Shabbos that if you, during the week you take large strides when you walk. Large strides. Shabbos you should walk with smaller paces. Why? Because the way you carry yourself on Shabbos should be different than the week. Your clothing should be different. Well, it's based on the Pesach. That's the same idea. That's the concept of the whole. So Ramesha, Ramesha finds it that Tzadik Rocha writes <coughs> that of the whole, it's, he holds it in the Sidoraisa. Ramesha, that g- doing anything which undermines the spirit of Shabbos and Yom Tif, it's in the Sidoraisa. So he holds. He said, he writes over there that he speaks about um, we have clocks on our lights. If let's say a person wouldn't know, we live. And all of a sudden, you see lights going on on Shabbos. And people think, not even Marasayim, not even Marasayim issue. And you think people are putting on lights, shutting them off the way they do it in the weekday. He yells, even though a clock is doing it. It's, it's a breach in, 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 in it, it's considered Uvdir Chol. You're not permitted, even though the clock was set before Shabbos. Today, because we don't even think twice, 
every home has a clock and it goes on and off. That's the reason why it doesn't in any way interfere with the Ruach of Shabbos. So Rabbi Shah writes over there. Otherwise, he said, it, it, it's a problem of do the whole. Is it because technology is more um, prevalent today? No, no, it's just because every home has it. But let's say you go to a community, who knows where, with they, 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 they never saw such a thing. Mm. Right? And all of a sudden, this is all of a sudden, the, the, it's a breach in Shabbos. People see lights going off, going off. On that, that, that's contrary to Ruach of Shabbos. That's considered what's considered with the whole. Okay? <coughs> People coming, you know, I once spent a Shabbos in Englewood, and I go Friday night to shul. People that come to shul, I don't know about Manhattan, they're dressed informally, informal uh, dress wear, you know, uh, these fancy sneakers and, you know, pants and a cardigan and a shirt and a whatever, whatever it is. You know, it's designer, is that the way you dress on Shabbos? It's not. It, 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 it says, It says, it's not only the way you walk. It's ev- even the way you dress. You, you dress Shabbos, Shabbos different than you dress during the weekday. Okay? Here there's a person who's an expert butcher. I mean, well weathered butcher in the olden days. Do you remember how much they used to how they used to weigh it was through estimation. Butcher would take the meat in his hand and he say, We'll go like this and he'd give it to you. Three dollars. You know? This is about this is eight ounces of meat. This is a portion. This is three portions. So his hand is the equivalent of a scale. So good, acting in that manner, that that's a the whole. That's weighing it. I'll tell you an interesting story, my Rashivzah when he first came from, from Europe so um, he was involved in the yeshiva in uh, New Haven, Connecticut. Of course, his father-in-law, Shalom, Zechariah Baruch was a yeshiva there. That was the first out-of-town yeshiva in America. It was in 1930, uh, 1931. 30, 31. <coughs> and afterwards, they wanted him to start a yeshiva in Cleveland. In 1932, so he goes to Cleveland. He's a young man. He was, uh, 1932, he was 31 years old. Arashiva Reddy had published, had written a safer on Kochim and Tyrus when he was 18 years old, when he was in Slabotka. Mm-hmm. And it has Haskoma from, from the Dvar of Rom and from Ramosha Mordechai, the Slabotka Rosh Hashiva. So it's very, very prestigious. And um, so he, he brings the safer with him. The safer brings it with him. Of course, you know, he's going to be interviewed by the Balabatin, by the people there. So the, uh, they had a Vada year. And he was written up in the Jewish newspaper, this young, world-renowned, Tom Chochom, genius from Europe, so on and so forth, published a safer at the age of 18, everything about him. And they have a, a, welcoming, a welcoming committee at the home of the, Vada, the president of Vadir. Who's the president of Vadir? The butcher. He's a butcher. So the butcher, he speaks Yiddish. How religious he was, I don't know. He was a Shema Shabbos, but he definitely was an Amoritz. She says to, to my Shiva, could you show me the Sefer? Can't they revise the Sefer? So the Sefer itself is maybe 200 pages. So he takes the Sefer, and Shiva goes, and he goes like this. Dos alas. <laughs> That's all it is. So my Shiva says, the way you weigh a piece of meat, that's the way he evaluated my Sefer. By the weight, by the size of it. Okay, he, he had the professional hand. So for the safety, he could do it. Of course, it's not accurate anyway, his estimation. But a piece of meat, he couldn't do it. Okay, so that's Rav Yudah Meshmol. Tabach Uman Osa Lishko Bosa Biyad. Vom Rav Yudah Meshmol. Tabach Uman Osa Lishko Bosa Bimayim. What about water displacement? Right? The way they had it, they had, would have a vessel, they had little notches on the side. And he had numbers, and by the, the water, display, how high the water would rise, that's how you knew how much meat was in the, in the vessel. So, a tab, but only a tabachuman, a professional bu- butcher, he knew exactly how to estimate by the water right, the water displacement, how, how much meat he's given the person. You're not permitted. Well, again, because that was a, ma- a method which they would actually evaluate how much meat was being sold. That's also of the rechol. It's interesting, yeah. Sheishlo Shnosos, you see Rashi, 
there, there are markings. There's markings on the vessel. Simonim bechliv knows the mamayim, but Simonim odino so kama mayim only in the balo. And the 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 notches on the side tells you how high the water rises, and if the water rises that high, you know exactly how much meat was given. Bishvil litro baser shikvar shiru l'kach, because already was estimated before. I mean, you know, um, years ago, you know, you have to eat a gzayis matzo. Is that you know what a gzayis matzo is? So they used to say, if you take a shot glass, a whisk a shot glass, and you take matzo meal, and you fill it up, so there's no air space. That, that's that's exayus, according to the most chumr shita, according to the most stringent shita, that's exayus. So if you see, if you take a hand matzah and you you crumple it and you pulverize it, and you put it there, then that's how they figured out exactly how much is it a half a matzah, hand of half of a machine matzah, a handmade matzah, two thirds of a matzah. But that's how they made the determination. So the same thing over here, they determined before by putting these markings on the side of the vessel when the water rises to so much, how much meat was put into that vessel. And that's it. You can't use this kind of vessel on Shabbos. On Yom Tif, because it's over the hole. The thing with the hand, he says, Rashi says, not exactly like I said. He says what they would do was they would take a weight in one hand and they take the meat in the other hand. Not the hand itself was. The hand could be estimation. By having the weight in one hand and the meat in the other hand, the butcher was actually accurately was able to give the meat which was the equivalent of what he felt the weight was. So the person himself is acting as the scale. That's what Rashi learns. <coughs> Okay. You know, in, in the old days, a person would come to the butcher <coughs> and he would buy, a, let's say, a substantial piece of meat. So it was heavy. How do you carry it? Right? Then give you a, you know, a plastic bag to put it into. So you'd have to carry it. How do you carry it? So what they do is they would cut a hole in the meat. For the hand, the person the grass monster would like, like his hand would fit into the meat. So are you so it have to be carved out? Are you permitted to carve out the meat? Because carving meat means you're selling it. You're about to sell it. You're not permitted to do it. That's no the whole. Also, last is basiat bibosir. Omar Avino be yodashori. But to make it with your hand, I mean, let's say you would go and push it through. Not take a knife and carve it out. He would do it just like by puncturing it with his hand, finger, that the person should be able to grab out him, that would be permitted. He would talk about not the carrying it, we're talking about preparing it for transportation. Now there's halacha that if you have meat and you leave the meat and you come back and it was exposed where a goy could have taken the meat and switched the meat. So even though it seems to be the same piece of meat, but if you're not sure that the same piece of meat, you're not, not permitted to eat the meat. It's called Bosesh and Solomon Ayim. The meat that was, was, was concealed from the eye. What about you cut the meat in a, in a triangular shape in a way where when the person receives the meat, he knows this, the meat, this is the meat that was sent from the butcher. Because it was cut in a way where it can't be duplicated. Or the person won't duplicate it. So are you permitted to cut the meat in a way to identify meat on Yom Tif. Is that considered Uv Dirucho? I'm not Uv Dirucho. Mud Lasso Simeon Baboski, Hod the Rabbi Rafuna, Machatich Lo Atlas Karnasa. You see this picture in Rashi. He would cut the meat in the triangle. It had three corners to it. That you're permitted to do. So Rashi says, when he would go, when. Uh, <coughs> Rabbi Funa, he would send me to his house with a, with an agent, and he had his, his particular simon. That was that I identified with him. Now the question is, they would actually 
they would when they would divide the portions, they would evaluate that this portion is the equivalent to the other portion. On Yom Tif. You know, you take this piece of meat, I'll take another piece of meat. And the, so they estimated the meat was the same. So Moses says, come on, look at Rebbe look at Rabbonon. Ik Rebbe Yudo, Hama Shok, Lord, and Kenegi, Bosa, Kenegi, Rakulu, Kenegi, Rakup. It's right. It says that you, when you weigh the meat, it's, you, know, you can only do it where it's so unusual using a meat cleaver or a vessel. Kenegi, in, Kenegi, Midi, Achrin, Elo. But to do it differently, let's see, you take two pieces of meat and they, and they balance on the scale, not... So who, who are they following? How did they conduct themselves by putting meat and then it balanced out who was the equivalent? If it was on a scale, we said, according to the Rebbe Yudo, it's only if you use a kli to offset, of course, not to use another portion of meat. And according to the Chachom, you can't, you can't be involved at all using a scale for, for anything, for weighing it. There, they, they followed the decision of Rabbi Yeshua. At the time, Rabbi Yeshua only showed him mono keneg and mono biyomtuf. That to balance a piece of meat versus another piece of meat that you permitted to anyomtuf. Mono keneg, portion for portion. Om Rav Yosef, halocho kerb Yeshua. We rule like, we, we don't rule like the Rabbi Yudha now. Mishnah, we don't rule like the Chachomim. We rule like Rabbi Yeshua. Hoyel, lutinam, bechores, chavose. Because we have a Mishnah which follows his position. And therefore, that's the reason why, even though this Mishnah says differently, we were like Rabbi Shudd. It did not. What did it say? Psulim Gdoshin. Now, Psulim, what's the Allah? What's Psulim Gdoshin? A person consecrates an animal, and now it becomes blemished. Initially, it was consecrated, it was, didn't have a blemish, it becomes blemished. So now it can't be brought as a korban. What do you do with it? So the Torah says, you redeem it with money. And now you take that money, you purchase another animal. Okay? Now, what, so once, when you redeem it, what's the status of the original animal? It's called Psulim Mikdoshim. You sell it. People buy it. Hegdish goes, they sell it. And the money that you sell for it, the Kedusha goes on to the money. Now, does, is that animal considered an ordinary animal? Are you permitted to work with that animal? Are you permitted to shear that animal? It's a sheep. Are you permitted to shear it? You're not permitted. The says, the only thing you're permitted to use the animal for is for its meat. Slaughter it to eat. But to work with it or to use it, shear it for its fleece, you're not permitted. Okay? So now, so it's going to be sold. Now, when you sell it, now, the benefit, let's say there, there's a higher price or lower price. You sell it for the highest price possible. The benefit goes to Hegdish. Second, Hashi. Yeah. So he says over there, the shoklim mono kereg in mono, the vachor. No, vachor. Yet a vachor initially didn't have a blemish. So that means it originally had kedusha. Now you want to, you slaughter it, and you want to weigh it. They say anything which is new to the whole, you cannot treat this, this because this meat originally has, was, was at a level that it could, you could use it as a carbon. You can't treat it as ordinary meat. But even though you can't treat it as ordinary meat, Rabbi, Yudis, uh, the, Rabbi Shua says you can put it on the scale and weigh portion for portion. So evidently he holds that's not a roof to the whole. Because it was the way you, you would normally met, weigh ordinary meat, right? If that's, if that, it would be considered disgraceful. So why does he permit it? Because he holds portion for portion. That's not called the uvderucho. That's the way it's normally done. Rashi says. Let's see. Right. Hold now. Bechores kavos. The os lishko of dimkor bos bechor bal muum. Koyem belitro. You're not permitted to sell the meat on a regular scale. We have a weight. You have weights. Last mas kach mechol. The bizoyinu. It's a disgrace. Uktani mono keneged mono. But but to measure portion for portion. That you're permitted. You dare come mishkol rishona v'shokol kineg the muter alma lavu to the chol choshev like.
Yeah. Yeah. So he says something beautiful. Now, if you have a if you have let's say an animal comes home a chatos, has to be redeemed. Now, when you're going to sell it, right? How do you evaluate something's worth? It's resale value. Let's say the animal's going to be sold for meat. Now, wh where are you going to get the highest price? <coughs> In the meat market. Of course, you have, yeah, that, that's where they sell meat. But taking a carbon, selling it in the meat market, something that was a carbon, it's a little bit of a disgrace. I mean, the answer is, but you, as a result of that, the person who's going to redeem it is going to pay a higher price. So we forego the COVID for Kochim, so you should have more money to buy a more expensive carbon. A Bechor, what happens when Bechor gets a, becomes a Balmum? There's no redemption. It, it's permitted immediately to eat, without redemption. Maise Behem, when you tithe the herd, every tenth animal. The Haloch is, if it becomes blemished, there's no redemption. It become, immediately becomes permitted. So there, what would be the value of what? Of selling it in the meat market. There's no gain to Hegdish. By a Korban, we have to redeem it. So over there, by selling the meat market, if you're able to sell something, that means it's going to fetch a higher price. So if it's going to fetch a higher price, the amount people are going to pay for it is going to be more money. So the carbon, the conditions go on to more money, so you can have a more enhanced carbon. So ultimately, it's covered for coach for hegdish. But bechor and meiser, where there is no pigeon, it doesn't need pigeon. That you don't need redemption. The moment it gets a moon, if you treat it like an ordinary meat, right? You're permitted to it immediately. So what's the value? of selling in the meat market. There's no pigeon. That, there's no price determinator over here. There's nothing that determines price because there no, there's no money given. Therefore, you can't. But even though the Bukhar and, and the Maisi, we allow you to measure on the scale where the counterweight is a piece of meat. That's Rabbi Yeshua. So we see clearly that it's not an Uvedir because if it Chol, we would not allow the Bukhar and the Maisi to be weighed in this manner. Okay. The Namtsul Mikdosh and Nosel Hegdish. A carbon, when it becomes possible, the benefit goes to Hegdish, means the higher value becomes Hegdish. The Shoki Moroke Neged Moroke Bevchor, Omele Abai Dim Loi, Atkalo Kam Yeshua Hocho, Elod Leke Bisoin Kochi, Avul Hosom, the Eka Bisoin Kochi Lo. Omale Abayis. Abayis says, there you go. Los Vildo Rabon and the Bechores Kerb Yeshua. Lord Yeshua, wait a second. One second. He says something beautiful. He said, he says like this, there's no comparison. Over there we talk about Bizoyan Kochim. If you treat Kochim as you treat Uvderuchol, over here, the Uvderuchol is not the weighing it. The question is over here, the it's a partnership. They bought an animal in partnership, now they're dividing. And how are they dividing? Each one wants to get an equal portion. So you're not evaluating the portion for the sake of the mitzvah. It's like partners, dividing, uh, dividing something they purchased. So it has no, nothing to do with there. In terms of weighing something, it's, it's, not, it's not considered over the whole other way we wouldn't allow it to be weighed in this manner. Because we allow you to weigh the, the meat of the b'chor if you have a portion versus a portion. Right? But over here, what's Rebchiyah 
And Rebbe Lezeb, Rebbe Shimon. Rebbe Shimon, Rebbe. What are they doing? They purchased an animal together. Now in Yom they want to divide. How are they dividing? By taking the portion and seeing if they, they, they balance out. There's not a question, it's not a question of Bezoyan. It's not an Uvderchol. The Uvderchol is not the way. The Uvderchol is the dividing. So it has nothing to do with the whole discussion in, in Bechoros. That it's not an Uvderchol when you, when you weigh the Bechor, the meat of the Bechor, knowing how much, how much meat you have. Okay? Aval Hocha, the Merzi Kuvderchol, lo. That's the reason why they allow over there, they agree with Rabbi Yeshua, they allow to be weighed. But here it appears to be why? Because it's the, it's, it's the chalukah, it's the dividing. One second. So evidently you can say the reason why, what you're saying they're weighing it because they want to, each one's mocked, but each one wants to get his down to the last ounce. So that means they're mocked on one another. You know, I don't want you to take more than is rightfully yours, and I don't want to take what's more than is rightfully mine. For Vohani Shev Beniso the Osulavi Rebbe, Vishtaka Chomesh Binayu Be Rebchia, but the copy of Shim Rebbe. Yeah. Somebody brought seven fish to Rebbe, Rebbe, Rebbe Danosi. We told him this is Rebbe Lozer, Rebbe, this is Rebbe Shim Rebbe, Rebbe Shim, the son of Rebbe, Rebbe Danosi. Somebody had brought seven fish to Rebbe, and Rebbe took five of the fish. He took the majority of the fish home. The little copy of Shim Rebbe, he'd say, you're upset. Somebody brings seven fish for your father, and Rebbe goes takes seven, five of the seven. He took the majority of the fish, and says, the little copy of Shim Rebbe, Rebbe Shim Rebbe, he wasn't mocked with it didn't bother. He was unfazed. So if he's unfazed, you can tell me mana the mana when you measure me- uh, the, the, the you want exactness. He said that's for the sake of partnership. You have to you have to take out one of the individuals here, one of the parties. Reb Chia and Reb Shom Barayosi were a with one another, but here they were. Okay. Next Mishnah. This comes up every Yom Tov. You have a knife, the knife dulls. Are you, al- are you allowed to take the knife, run it over a grindstone to sharpen the knife? You have a knife sharpener. You know, you want to put it in, are you allowed to use it on, on Yom Tov? Right? It's for Ochel Nefesh. You want to cut, the, you want to be able to slaughter the animal. You want to, the, the, the knife is dulled, it doesn't cut the bread. Are you allowed to sharpen it? It's a machlokas. It, it, it may be in this Doraisa. We rule it's in this Doraisa. Because Ochel Nefesh is only permitted when it's directly to the food. This is perfecting something which you need to prepare the food. Okay? And w- what is a sharpening knife? It's Makapapatish. You're perfecting the knife. A mashchizin asag miyomtif. You're not permitted to sharpen it on a on a on a rhinestone. On yomtif al nasiyon al gabi chaverto. But to run the knives over one another, you ever see the way the people, the butcher, you know, they go one over the other. That way, you're permitted, even though you're sharpening it. So Rashi says, why knife on knife and not on the grindstone? So he says, because again, since during the week the Uvdir Chol is what is done on the grindstone, so when you do it on Yom Tif, one blade on the other, it's not Uvdir Chol. We'll see. Om Rafuna lo shonu el mashches shalevin. That that it says in the mission, not permitted to run the blade over the st- over a grind, over mashches over a sharpener. It's only if it, the st- it's made of stone. Avo it's muter, but to run the blade over a piece of a block of wood, which also you could sharpen it, that's permitted. Because since one normally doesn't sharpen a knife, or it's not as effective on a, on a, on a block of wood as a stone, therefore it's permitted. Omrav Yudam Shmuel damage eleven sir. That that we say you're not permitted to run the knife over the. St- Stone that it's not lo amor el chadudo. That's only when the intent is to sharpen knife. Avol havich shamnunish muter. But let's say you have some uncleanly, you have some fat on the knife, and you want to run the edge, the knife over the edge of the stone. 
That's permitted. Even though when you do that, first, it appears like you're sharpening it. Does, does anybody know you're in? And secondly, when you rub it, if you really want to get the fat off, you really have to press down. So simultaneously, it's like a psychoratia, right? It's a psychoratia that what? That the knife simultaneously is being, sh- is being sharpened. See, but the inference of this statement is, but if it would be made of wood, since wood, a person normally doesn't sharpen a knife on a block of wood, it would be permitted. Rashi is, it says, Mashchez, what's not permitted? Uh, a sharp, a, a stone, if it's made of stone. So Rashi says, why not? The Mesachan is sharpier, because he, that's, it, it sharpens it the way it should be sharpened. The Merzi Kimisakin Bechol, and it appears as if you're perfecting the knife as you would do during the weekday. I mean, are you permitted to sharpen the knife? I mean, the way we're learning now, it seems to be, the sharpening the knife is permitted. You're permitted to sharpen. Because otherwise, what do you have to tell me? Because it's over the hole. Because that's the way you sharpen the knife during the, knife during the weekday. You're not permitted to sharpen the knife, period. Don't tell me because it appears like something else. Factually, you're sharpening the knife. You're not permitted to sharpen the knife. So it seems to be sharpening the knife, you are permitted. Because there's one opinion that you are. But even though you're permitted, but what about if it's, it appears to, as you would do it during the weekday? That's not permitted. Because that has to do with the spirit of Yom Tif. It's two, two separate things. Okay, we'll stop here.